Well, good morning, everyone. Um, and welcome to a very rare, very unusual Thursday morning virtual, not quite a service, but today is Ascension. It's Ascension Day. And um, I've been asked by a few people if we could perhaps do something similar to what we did on Good Friday virtually to mark Ascension. And so, absolutely, um, was the answer I got when I spoke to Tim. And so this morning, what we're going to do is we're going to go through a little bit of, um, it's a mixture of uh, the normal common morning worship prayer, the daily, the daily office, um, mixed in with a bit of the Franciscan morning daily office, which is very similar to the common worship uh, daily office. Words are going to appear up on your screen, so you don't need to worry. You'll be able to join in the bits that are in bold and also say the word or next to it. So don't worry about this. It's just a moment in the morning, this morning, where we will go through uh, the, that morning office. Um, we'll have the reading for the office today. And then I will deliver a short little talk around the ascension. Um, so... What I'm going to do is I'm going to start with something you will not be familiar with, which is the setting of the office, which is a very Franciscan thing. Um, the words are going to appear on your screen now, as we say, together this morning, as we get in the mind to focus on exactly what could ascension mean. We say together, Eternal God, in whose perfect realm no sword is drawn, but the sword of righteousness, and no strength known but the strength of love. So guide and inspire the work of those who seek your kingdom, that all your people may find their security in that love which casts out fear, and in the fellowship revealed to us in Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. And now we move on to the next part of setting out the preparation as it's called on the common worship books or app that you might be using. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Your throne has been established from of old. You are from everlasting. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth. To you be the glory and praise forever. From the darkness of death, you have raised your Christ to the right hand of your majesty on high. The pioneer of our faith, his passion accomplished, has opened for us the way to heaven and sends on us the promised spirit. May we be ready to follow the way and so be brought to the glory of his presence, where songs and triumph forever sound. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. And now we're going to go through the psalmology for today, which is based on Psalm 150. The refrain is, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. So after I say each verse, we will go into that refrain. Alleluia, O oh, praise God in his holiness, praise him in his ferment of his power. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise him for his mighty acts, praise him according to his excellent greatness. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise him with a blast of trumpets, praise him upon the harp and lyre. Let everything that has breath Praise the Lord. Praise him with timbrel and dances. Praise him upon the strings and pipe. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise him with ring cymbals. Praise him upon clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Alleluia. God of life and love, whose son was victorious over sin and death, make us alive with his life, that the whole world may resound with your praise, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, now and forever. Amen. 
This is the part in common worship where we would have the canticle of the day. This is where the Franciscan elements start to come in a little bit more. The canticle for today is the canticle of creation. And I will have that appear for you up on the screen, uh, which I'll switch to now. Most high, all-powerful, good Lord, yours are the praises, the glory and the honour and all blessing. To you alone, most high, do they belong, and no human is worthy to mention your name. Praise be to you, my Lord, with all your creatures, especially Sir Brother Son, who is the day through whom you give us light, and is the beautiful and radiant with great splendour, and bears a likeness of you, most high one. Praised be to you, my Lord, through sister moon and stars. In heaven you form them clear and precious and beautiful. Praised be to you, my Lord, through brother wind and through the air, cloudly and serene, in every kind of weather, through whom you give sustenance to your creatures. Praised be to you, my Lord, through sister water, who is very useful and humble and precious and chaste. Praise be to you, my Lord, through Brother Fire, through whom you light the night. And he is beautiful and playful and robust and strong. Praise be to you, my Lord, through our sister Mother Earth, who sustains and governs, and who produces various fruit with coloured flowers and herbs. Praise be to you, my Lord, through those who give pardon for your love and bear infirmity and tribulation. Blessed are those who endure peace, for by you, Most High, shall they be crowned. Praise be you, my Lord, through our sister bodily death, through whom no, live, no one living can escape. Woe to those who die in mortal sin. Blessed are those whom death will find in you your most holy will, for the second death shall do them no harm. Praise and bless my Lord and give him thanks and serve him with great humility. Glory for to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. Amen. And we all say together, see what the Lord our God has done and exalt him in the sight of the living. Alleluia. And now we're going to go into our gospel reading this morning, which is taken from Acts chapter 1, verses 1 to 11. And I'm going to be using the New English Translation, the NET. I wrote the former account, Theophilus, about all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken up to heaven, after he had given orders by the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen, to the same apostles also. After his suffering, he presented himself alive with many convincing proofs. He was seen by them over a 40-day period and spoke about matters concerning the kingdom of God. While he was with them, he declared, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait there for what my father promised, which you heard about from me. For John baptised with water, but you will be baptised with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had gathered together, they began to ask him, Lord, is this the time when you are restoring the kingdom to Israel? He told them, You are not permitted to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witness in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the furthest parts of the earth. After he said this, while they were watching, he was lifted up on a cloud and hid from their sight. As they were still staring into the sky while he was going suddenly, two men in white clothing stood near them and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand here looking up into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come back in the same way you saw him. Go in to heaven. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Tell out his salvation from day to day. He has led captive, captivity captive 
and given gifts to his people. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Tell out his salvation from day to day. So, ascension. It's a bit of an interesting event, isn't it? Just when we think about it in terms of our faith, we have, you know, in the 40 days prior, we have the Good Friday, we have the Easter Sunday. And in, for most of us, I think it's very easy to say, for many of us, our minds automatically then tend to drift towards Pentecost. That's where we tend to go, I think, in our heads right after Easter. We tend to go towards Pentecost. But of course, Pentecost doesn't happen until we have until we get the ascension. And of course, what I've always found striking about the ascension is as we, <coughs> as we read, and as we heard in this morning's reading, Jesus is lifted up and hidden behind a cloud. And the visual, I always get to my mind of what that might look like or what it conjures up. Um, I have to go into a little bit of a, a, a backstory to explain. So when I was a child in my home church, um, which was the Church of the Ascension in Crown Hill, um, it's a church, um, actually quite fairly modern as churches go. It's not super modern, but still fairly modern, but still sort of constructed within that very traditional sort of look. Um, but I'm going to go to a, a slide now on uh, the interior of the Church of the Ascension, um, and I'll, I'll explain a bit about it. So here's the exterior shot, as you can see. Towards uh, the end there, you have the altar, and it's in a gold canopy. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, what does that have to do with the Ascension, Rob? Well, as a young altar boy, when I was helping the, the, the priest there with communion or kneeling down to prayer especially, we kneel right around the altar. There's kneelers right around the altar. And so as you look up, as you might often do to pray, you would get this beautiful view, view because underneath the canopy, which will come up on the screen now, is this absolutely wondrous painting which is on the screen for you now. <coughs> this painting was painted by Robert Medley. And I can't really go through um, what was conjured up in the moments of prayer and reflection that I had sat knelt underneath that canopy, uh, that canopy, everything that painting evoked. But I can say it is one of my earliest memories of a painting evoking a faith response um and i'm just going to leave that you're going to see on the screen now that picture that painting of what was un, what is underneath the altar at uh, the church of the ascension in crown hill and i'm just going to leave it there for a few more moments just to sort of see what sort of imagery it evokes for you because i absolutely find it spectacular and it is still what i think of to this day when i think of the ascension and so it only makes sense to, <coughs> excuse me, share it with you all this morning. And I'm just going to allow your thoughts and your feelings to develop before I continue in my little thought this morning on what um, essentially the ascension is or what it means, at least from my understanding of it. So... Often, when we think of the Ascension or read about it, we naturally and understandably, I think, we arrive at a place of thinking really about death. And, and invariably, because Jesus is described as being taken into heaven, obviously we know this is the raised and resurrected Jesus, but it's hard not for us as human beings to not think of naturally those people who have departed this life and gone to glory with the Father. And whether that be a family member, a friend, a loved one. And we invariably go to how much we miss them. How much we can detect their absence. Even though we will always feel them in our heart. We, we, we intend, I think, and I think this plays into why Ascension perhaps isn't focused on as much as it should be. Um, we tend to feel sad or mournful. And obviously it's the Easter, it's, it's the Easter point. It, we're leading up to the birth of the church as it's sometimes referred to as Pentecost. That's a problem that I won't enter today, but we're getting to that point of the descending of the Holy Spirit on the apostles. Um, 
And so I think it becomes really easy for us to conflate the ascension as an event that was sort of sad. But it isn't the same thing, and that's where it's crucial. Um, as Luke states in his account and acts at the end of Luke's Gospel, this is the resurrected Jesus. This is the conquering of the grave Jesus. Jesus is instructing them and he is preparing them. And, and even here, he is telling them soon that the Holy Spirit is going to descend upon them. When Jesus is taken up and hidden by the cloud, as the apostles gaze up towards the sky, they are told that as they have seen Jesus ascend, so shall be the manner of his return. The invitation then to the apostles, the apostles is to go await the coming of the Spirit and then to go out and continue to spread the message, to continue what Jesus has shown them, secure in the knowledge firsthand that Jesus will return. In the moment of the ascension, we have the complete testimony, testimony of the good news. And the apostles have bared witness to it. The way in which we read after the ascension, after Pentecost, how the apostles go forward. As we read about from Paul and his encounter on the road to Damascus. The ascension isn't a moment of loss. It's not a moment of Jesus' absence from the world. No, it's far, far from that. It's about how Jesus is now living among us in a new way. Yes, he is no longer in one particular place as he was before the ascension. Now he is with the Father. As we recount uh, John's Gospel at this point, the very first part of John's Gospel, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now that Jesus is with the Father, like the Father, Jesus is present in every space, in every time, and crucially, vitally, he is close to each and every one of us. Now in our lives, we are never alone. We have an advocate who is beside us, who carries us, who defends us, is there for us even when we don't always know. There is Jesus beside us, guiding our lives. The crucified and risen Jesus is there for us always, 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 prayer through the Spirit, we encounter Jesus. As we grow in Jesus and Jesus and the Spirit indwell in us, we have the great privilege, the great honour to share what Jesus has shared with us. That love, love of each other, the love of God that we, the human race, often broken, often downtrodden, have an advocate who died for the love of us so that we shall never be alone, that we should always know how much our Creator loves us. The ascension isn't a moment of sorrow, but of joy. It's Jesus gifting God's love to the whole of creation and saying, you are never alone. It's about the brotherhood and sisterhood of all life. Before our reading today, we recited, or you heard, the canticle of creation, that Franciscan canticle that speaks of the brotherhood and sisterhood of all creation. That's why it was chosen for today. In the ascension, Jesus connects us, all, everything. Indeed, the ascension as often as it is to think of it and liken it to the loss of a loved one, to the absence, it's the opposite. It's Jesus connecting the threads of all life back to our Father in heaven, back to God. The ascension is an incredible event. And now, as we return to the rest of the office to finish off this morning, let's remember exactly what the ascension is and what it represents. And before... Um, right after, um, before we go into affirming our faith together with the Apostles' Creed, which is going to come up on the screen, I'm going to put back up that wonderful painting of the Ascension that hangs over the canopy of the altar at the Church of the Ascension, just as a final thought and reflection on the Ascension. 
Let what I've said, if it's touched anything with you, see what that image now brings back and conjures up in your mind. And now, let us affirm our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now, in a moment of quiet, I'm going to say some prayers and then I'm going to leave a moment for us to pray silently together, specifically as we might be think uh, for whatever we might be thinking. So let us pray. You are holy, Lord, the only God who does wonders. You are strong. You are great. You are most high. You are the almighty God, ruler of heaven and earth. You are three in one, Lord God of gods. You are good, all good, the highest good. Lord God, living and true, you are love, you are wisdom, you are humility, you are patience, you are beauty, you are meekness, you are security, you are rest, you are joy, you are hope and joy, you are justice, you are moderation, you are all our riches, you are enough for us, you are the protector, you are our guardian and defender, you are the strength, you are refreshment, you are our hope, you are our faith, you are our charity, you are all our sweetness, you are our eternal life, great and wonderful Lord, God Almighty, merciful Saviour. And now let us take a moment to silently pray for whatever might be on your heart and your minds this morning on Ascension. Grant, we pray, almighty God, that as we believe your only begotten Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ, to have ascended into the heavens, so we in heart and mind also ascend and with him continually dwell, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And remaining in the attitude of prayer, let us now pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us this morning. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Well, we are coming to the end of our set of morning offices this morning. And as is typical with the morning office, we're going to use the collect for the day. Now, this one is changed slightly from the one that you'll have in your books or the um, Church of England Daily Prayer app. It's mostly the same. There's a few added bits on the end. So, um, it will appear up on the screen as I read us through it this morning. Thank you ever so much for joining us and watching and joining in the prayer this morning. May Christ, who has opened the kingdom of heaven, bring us to reign with him in glory, O friend of the forsaken and lover of the unloved. Make us bearers of your presence to all. Teach us to walk in the poverty of your Son and to be among your people as those who serve in the name of him who for our sakes became poor, Jesus Christ our Lord. And may we know your blessing God, 
May we know the blessing of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit, now and always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. And once again, thank you for joining us this morning. I will see you all again on Sunday. And I hope you've found this little, un, uh, this little virtual service here on the Ascension helpful. I will see you Sunday, everybody. Thank you.